and there is a good lesson in history about a person that decided to isolate himself from good companionship and worship Allah alone. A good story. And there is a reference to him in the Quran. Let's see what happened to him and why he fell in his problem. Allah Azza wa Jalla at the end of Surah Al Hashr he says, كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ كفر فَلَمَّا كَفَرْ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِنْكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah Azza wa Jalla gives us a story about a shaytan who said to Al Insan, the one human being, Ukfur, disbelief. Then what happened? If I was to say to someone, Ukfur, you will say to me, get lost. No way. But what happened to this person? He disbelieved. How did he disbelieve? Who was this person? Al Qurtubi, rahimahullah, he mentions the story in his tafsir and he says that this one person that disbelieved was Barsis al Abid. Barsisah al Abid. My brothers in Islam, who is Barsisah? Barsisah is someone who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was from among Bani Israel. He worshipped Allah for 70 years. 70 years. And he did not disobey Allah even a blink of an eye. 70 years in worship. He made a house, a worship house for himself above the mountain. He isolated everyone. He believed that he can reach Allah alone. He went and he began to worship Allah by himself. 10 days fasting, he comes out for a break. 10 days he prays in his house, then he comes out, takes some fresh air and goes back in like this. For Iblis wanted to, Danny wanted to deceive him. So Iblis didn't know how to deceive him. So he made a sitting, a gathering, a meeting with the shayateen, marada to shayateen, the most evil and wretched of shayateen. And he said to them, what do you say? How are we going to deceive this person? For they said, a shaytan, one of the shayateen, whose name was al Abyad, He said, leave him. I know how to deceive him. He said, how are you going to? He said, leave, no. Leave it upon me and I'll deceive him. I'll deal with him. So with Shaytan, al Abyad, he dressed as a worshiper and he went to Barsisa and he built, he constructed a worship house right next to Barsisa. And he began to worship. Shuf, Shaytan. He did not construct a nightclub next to Barsisa. He did not construct a liquor store. A shaitan is going to come to you through your deen. A shaitan is waiting for you at the door of the masjid. You need to realize this. Watch what he did. So Barsisa would worship and he would come out. And every time he'd come out, he'd see a shaitan in sujood, crying, making dua. Well, he's affected. Allahu Akbar. Who's this wali of awliyaillah? Who's this friend of Allah that he's worshipping? Time over time, months after months went by. Eventually, a shaitan came to Barsisa and he said to him, Teach me from what Allah has taught you. For Barsisa said to him, Anta al wali, you're the one that's supposed to teach me. Teach me what Allah has taught you. For he said to him, Let me teach you something. And he taught him a word of lie that if it was to be read on someone that is possessed, he'll be cured. He taught him a word of lie. Barsisa took this word, which shaitan went down to society. And he began to possess the people. Someone is, Allah send him to Sheikh Barsisa. He's got the name, he's got the cure, he's got the solution. They take him to Barsisa. Barsisa would read this word of lie, which shaitan would come out. A one person after another, after another, until shaitan realized that Barsisa is in his hand right now. So shaitan went to Iblis and he said to him, Qad rajul. I have destroyed this man. Khalas. Iblis said, how? But he's still praying. He's still fasting. He said to him, Khalas, once he's on the slippery slide, that's it, the end of it is he's going just down to his death and destruction. Until the shaitan, he went and he possessed the most beautiful woman in society. Well, where are we going to send this woman? Khalas, take her to Sheikh Barsisa. He's got the word, he's got the solution. As Sheikh Barsisa came down, he read, nothing happened. Nothing happened. As shaitan, he said to him, Ya Barsisa, this woman, is very bad and she's corrupt and sinful. This name is not going to work on her. Take her to your palace. Let her see from you al ibadah. Let her worship with you. And then eventually when she makes a tawbah, you read the name, he'll come out. La a'uzu billah. How can I do this? Ya Barsisa, anta walaw. Sheikh Barsisa, you don't fall in the fitna. Anyway, he agreed. Her parents agreed. They took her to his house and she remained there for a while. And from time to time, a shaitan would possess her. And he would bring her into these modes of fits in where she would uncover herself. Ubar Sisa would see that until time after time he fell and he did and he committed a zina with her. 
For then as shaitan came and he said to him, Ya Barsisa, she's pregnant from a zina and the people are going to make a mockery and a shame out of you. And he said to him, go kill her. And then the people will say, Barsisa al-Abid, go back into your worship and in your prayer and in your fasting, oh, khalas, neglect everyone, don't worry about them. So he did that, he killed her and he buried her. But shaitan said to Barsisa that if her family comes, say to them that, you know, she was possessed with shaitan, took her, Allah alam where she went. A shaitan went to her family. And he said to her family that Barsisa committed zina with her. He killed her and he buried her in such and such place. So they went and followed and they saw where she was. And they came down and they all wanted to kill Barsisa for what he did. So they grabbed him and they choked him and they took him to the king's palace. And the verdict was ruled down, handed down the death sentence on Barsisa. For now the entire village and community is around this man that worshipped Allah for 70 years. And they came and they wanted to kill him. Well, shaitan appears in the form of a man before Barsisa. And he said to him, Ya Barsisa, no one can save you from this except me. Listen to me. He says to him, what is it? Give me the solution. People are going to kill me. He said to him, Usjudli Ya Barsisa, make sujud for me. Make sujud for me, I'll save you from all of this. He said to him, how? You told me zina and I committed zina. You told me to kill and I killed. Now make sujood for you. Usjudli Ya Barsisa, make sujood, I'll save you out of this. So, Sheikh Barsisa fell into sajda for Iblis and the people killed him and he died upon shirk wa kufr. Wal-hiyathu billah. Wallah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned there, mentioned in the Quran, فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ Sheikh Barsisa, 70 years of worship. That's how his last day on earth was. That's how his last day on earth was. He died surgically Iblis. He died upon kufr and shirk. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, فَكَانَ عَاقِبَتَهُمَا Both of them, الشَّيْطَانُ Barsisa. Their punishment was, أَنَّهُمَا فِي النَّارِ خَالِدَيْنِ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الظَّالِمِينَ What does it mean, my brothers? What does it mean that someone worships Allah for 70 years and he dies upon kufr? You know what destroyed Barsisa? Mother, the entire story was to tell you what destroyed him. You know what destroyed him? He thought he can reach Allah alone. He isolated himself from his community. This is what destroyed him. This is why he fell into what he fell. He believed, I don't know what he believed. He might have thought that the people are no good for him. That he worships better than the people. Like some people we have today. Allah, everyone is a kafir. Everyone is misguided. al masajid a'udhu billah. They're all innovators. Let me go worship Allah on my own. Let me go open my own masjid in the house. Eventually, that's the same person that will become like Barsisa if he's not careful. Beware, my brothers, that you're not another Barsisa that is living. Beware. Understand the importance of brotherhood and companionship. In Al-Fatiha, we read every day, Ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim. We don't say, Ihdini. Guide me. La, la, la. You make dua for your brother. Ihdina all of us. We only dig up. We make dua for each other. Allah Azza wa Jal, when he speaks about the believers entering the paradise, he says, وَسِيقَ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ رَبَّهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ زُمَرًا That the people of the paradise, they enter the paradise in groups. Zumaran meaning in groups. Not furada, not alone. Why Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, because they worshipped Allah in this life together. So they entered the paradise together. Don't ever think that you're not in need of righteous companionship that remind each other of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that wake up each other for the night prayers, that sit together after Salat al-Fajr until sunrise, that encourage each other to seek knowledge. Go out together and calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. That is the simple secret of Ibad al-Rahman.